welcome to the Drip and Stone Podcast, the podcast between friends, raise a glass, and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle. Yes, sir. Today's Wednesday. It's time to drink. <laughs> That's correct. Honestly, though, Kyle, in real time, it's a really weird Monday. <laughs> it is. It, is <laughs> it feels the... a little odd recording on Monday. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if we've ever recorded on a Monday. Kyle, it is beautiful outside today. Indeed. Yeah, we, we've got a, a great day on our hands here in the lovely Sunshine State. Yeah, in the wilds of Florida. <laughs> in the Florida. wilds of Florida, here on the back porch studio. I know, man. Yeah. You know, uh, these are like the days where I like Florida. I, I'm not going to go so far as to say love, but these are the <laughs> days. <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a bit strong. That's a bit strong. These are days where I tolerate Florida. Like, I, I really like, I like winter in Florida. Yeah. Because it's, it's cold, but it's also like tolerable. Right. But then you have these like nice days that are sunny in the low 80s, mid to low 80s. There's a bit of a, a, a nice, breeze cool going breeze. on. Yeah. P- cool breeze. We don't get that very often. No. Um, so I like relish these days because man, in about two weeks, yeah, you're not wrong. It's going to be 95 and a hundred thousand percent humidity. And man, we, we have taken full advantage of this day. Yeah. Went out and played some golf this morning. We did. Brisk. <laughs> cool morning. It, it was a little bit. It was more, um, it was more brisk than I intended it yeah. to be. It was, it was, dare I say, chilly. It, it was a little chilly, especially driving that golf cart like out <laughs> to the first, first tee. First few holes Woo. were tough, man. But, hey, we got through it, and it was gorgeous by it, the time we It left. really, truly was. Like, got a little bit of sun. Yeah. You know, it's it was it was nice out. It was a great day. Great Florida day. Indeed. So uh, we actually had plans to go right after golf and go record somewhere. Right. We were going to go do a thing. Uh, we did not call this establishment ahead of time, and that might be on us. Well, who would have who thought you needed to? Well, honestly, right. You know, yeah. You're going to a restaurant. Exactly. This is a, a restaurant. I think we've mentioned it before. This is a, a restaurant in Tampa. It's a German place. We've both been to this German place. We both like this German place. Yep. So we were going to go hang out with them and uh, have some food and drink some, some drinks. drink some drinks but it didn't work out because they were closed today until four <laughs> yeah oh well and so good idea we'll save it for later yeah yeah i know so look forward to that episode maybe we'll actually do it um during october, october fest, fest. <laughs> in munich well you know the drip stone munich takeover is still on the table yeah so what we did instead is we decided to come back here to the back porch studio and we're going to do something we've actually wanted to do for a couple of weeks now and that is a true blind tasting how do you mean well or what we're going to do is i'm going to pour three different bourbons and or whiskeys for you oh okay okay. so you have no idea the three whiskeys that you're about to drink okay Um, i think what we'll do is we'll kind of go through it i have i've poured the same for me but i know what they are so this is a true blind for one of us right so what we'll do is we'll go through this and uh, I know the ones that you're talking about. Um, I can then kind of have, obviously, some conversation about that whiskey. I don't want to give anything away. Right. And then, uh, you know, rank them and see what, what falls where. And then at the end, we'll reveal what whiskeys of the three you chose. What are we drinking? Yeah, like what, what, uh, you know, what is the order and, and what we're drinking as a whole and what you think about those things. Cool. What, what is the purpose for us doing this kind of blind? Well, I mean, I think in the blinds that we've done for the podcast in the past... You know, as much as we have tried to make them true blinds to where we're not sure which whiskey is in which glass, that's certainly interesting in and of itself. But to actually have no clue as to which whiskeys are available, you know, you you, you go back into your whiskey room right. and how many how many open bottles do you have right now? Oh, <laughs> open bottles? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say close to eighty. <laughs> So maybe. <laughs> so I mean, the fact that we've got three <laughs> out of eighty. Yeah. Who knows what they are? You know, it, uh, and that's fascinating <laughs> to me. You do. You right. know. But for me, I, it, it, that's super interesting. Like to have absolutely no clue. To me, it's going to generate a much more honest reaction to it. Yeah, for you know, sure. As much as we tried, and uh, you know, I think you know we do a, a good job of being able to push aside, you know, preferences and stuff like that, and and labels and things, and try to just focus on what's in the glass, but. You know, this is making it absolutely where you have to do that. Right. Even just knowing I've got five glasses in front of me and those are the five bottles that I'm drinking from. Right. I'm automatically, and, and that's what we always do. We always try to guess what we're drinking. Yeah, you, you already kind of go into it with a, a bit of a bias and a bit of a what what am I drinking. In this right. case, we're not trying to discern what are you drinking. No, it's just, you know, what do you think about this liquid in this glass? Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super interested. Like... I'm I'm excited for this, and I'm interested to see what happens, and I'm interested to see um, just kind of in general, like what do you get out of these three? Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you some questions? No, 
Because then that, I think like, and the reason why I don't want to is that I think that gives you some indication that already puts some things in your mind of like, oh, here's what I need to be thinking of and here's what I need to be looking for. Okay. I, I will tell you this. These are American whiskeys. I, I didn't put any scotches and I didn't put any Irishes into these glasses. Okay. Okay. I, and maybe that's given too much, but I, I think you could, I think we're well, good enough right now that you could be like, this is an Irish whiskey. This is a scotch. Yeah, for sure. I mean, not just based on color, but based on, on pretty easy you know sniff test yeah you know that that you're gonna already be there absolutely all right cool. so so that's that's all i'm gonna give you that's all i want to give you whiskeys. I, yeah they're all american whiskeys cool all right so let's start with your a glass tell us a little bit about the the color and kind of like our normal you know our normal tastings yep looking at the three that you've you've poured out here for us yep it's it's a bit of a value scale it's gonna it go really, light medium dark that was not so, intentional yeah well you did it <laughs> It's there. And A is certainly by far the lightest of the three. Oh, yeah. Uh, light straw water. Definitely. Looks like whiskey. It, you know what? It reminds I mean, looking me. Looking at it, I would have thought it was a scotch. Yeah, honestly. that's what I was going to say. And that's, that's also why I wanted to tell you that this, these are all American whiskeys so that you weren't like, what scotch is this? But yeah, these are, it, it's so light that it definitely looks like a scotch. Yep. Or maybe, maybe an Irish too. I mean, I'll be honest. I could even, to an extent, <laughs> nose is like a scotch. <laughs> Oh, we already messed up. <laughs> what do you got on the nose? Pretty pretty hefty kick and proof on the nose. Definitely tickling the old nostrils there. <laughs> Weirdly, Get, that, that's some, the name of this one. It's the nostril tickler. Oh, tickle, yeah. tickle nostril. I'm getting like lemon and wheat. Okay. Interesting. Like yeah. dusty wheat or like bright, fresh, nah, like dusty just cut? Wheat. Okay. Dusty wheat. Because you're saying lemon, lemon, you know, bright and fresh. Right. Unless you, I guess you're going like candied lemon. But well, like, no, I, honestly, it's almost like Sprite in a way. <laughs> yeah, like lemon in, lime, in a like, weird, a lemon yeah, lime like a lemon soda. lime soda. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now that you say that, I get like lemon lime soda and like sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, like a little little bit of that dusty, little bit kind of oak coming through on the on the back end of it. Okay. All right. What do you got on the palate, Kyle? Man, a lot, lot more oak on the palate. Yeah. Heavy oak on the palate. A little bit, little bit of lime tartness too. Definitely Li- some, lime tartness. No lemon tartness. Lemon tartness. Yeah, like a like a lemon tart, almost like one of those like lemon heads, those candies. Oh yeah, that dude. Wow, that is that is good. I think honestly, like that is spot on. Lemon head, lemon yeah. drop. Yeah, man, very lemony and like yeah, a really nice proof bite. Just like the whole top of my tongue just cinching up. Yeah, you know what? Like you said, lemon, and that's like that's what I'm getting. I'm getting like oaky lemonade. Yeah, like, dude. Like a barrel aged lemonade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, like that that lemon head candy that just comes in like the little yellow box. Yep. That is 100 percent yellow box. What I, what I'm, yeah, yellow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just like, checking. Like, like yellow wood. Yeah. Yep. Or like yellow belly. Yellow belly. A lot of herbal qualities too. Man, almost like gin adjacent. Gin adjacent. Yeah. Interesting. That gin note is really interesting, and, and I, I absolutely see what you mean. There's a an herbal nature that I'm. That's that's kind of fun. There, that's that's quite fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really like I mean, just not not that my uh, my gin knowledge is expansive in any way, but it's like gin adjacent in my head. Like a really good balance between the sweet and the bitter. Yeah, like they they they're really harmonious in that way. Like it's really sweet right off the bat, but then the bitter, the oak kind of bitter comes through and just sails pretty damn delightful that's interesting man and you say we've had that before yep that is not that is not reminiscent of anything off all the right. top of my head all right let's go ahead and move on to letter b letter b look so a little bit darker yep i did not put equal pores in these glasses Le- uh, letter a had a little bit of a heavier pour Woo! definitely a different nose like this one's just screaming honey and caramel vanilla like this is like nosing in my head, like a classic bourbon. Okay. With yeah. Like with like some like weedy notes. Yeah, definitely like definitely vanilla, and you get that like nice little like burnt toffee note. Yeah. Yeah. Some some citrusy kind of things happening. Mmm. I, I just want a cologne of this. Yeah. That's that's pretty. And it's like you get some of that like deep dark like sugar notes, like that like sorghum sugar. Yeah. Vanilla, just, vanilla bean. Yeah. The wind's kicking up a little, Kyle. Feels great. Yeah. Great day. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go taste her here. Do it, man. First sip is like very mellow. What do you mean? Uh, like flavors are not jumping out right away. They're 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 all kind of whispering to me right now. Okay. 
right off the bat is this like a, a drop down in proof right because it's really strange that the nose is as prominent and loud as it is but that first sip was just really kind of muted okay that, that second sip was like all oak just strong bitter all the way through yeah and like bitter kind of orange peel yeah if i'm thinking like the sweetness between a and b b the sweet to me on the nose is more pronounced but yeah. it drops off on the palate right uh, but yeah, the bitterness kicks up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, big punch and bitter. Like yeah, like like just literally, like if you took a an orange peel out of your old fashion and chewed on it, you don't do it that. Would, it would taste like this. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I have. <laughs> Man, that bitter kicks. Yeah. On this. Do you feel like the proof drops off demonstrably? Or you think it's just like a, eh, no. that's a couple points? No, it just seems like you know. A had had a way more, and again, that might have just been because it was like my first whiskey of the day. Sure, but it was definitely like grab and hold more. Where this doesn't seem to be. What about the mouthfeel? Mouthfeel, it's not oily. It runs off pretty quick. That taste feeling like a little bit of a rye spice. Yep, on that one, some cinnamon poking through, but like yeah, kind of a yeah spicy rye. I would say it's almost like licorice e. Like there's a little bit of like sure. I, I don't know if I go rye, but like we, sometimes we said like rye and the licorice and the like anise right. and that kind of thing. It all kind of tastes similar. Yeah. Um, but I get less pine and more licorice. Yeah. And it, it's still that like herbal nature, dark herbal. Yeah. Not like yeah the the, the brighter kind of ginny herbalness. Right. Definitely like a darker. It's like a like a Jägermeister like a, herbal kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Or just like a dark tea. Yeah. Yep. That one's just singing bitter to me. Okay. Any final comments? Ooh. And then just, man, the, the, the spicy, like black peppery spicy kind of thing happens at the end. All right. Great nose. But I'll be honest, like that one's kind of tough. Like as far as like, I mean, the what I'm going to uh, say is the, like the, the barrel bitter. Yeah. Is really kind of like the prominent flavor. Is of the barrel. Is like that barrel bitter note. Yeah. But All yeah, right. No, definitely like that that bitter is kind of the highlight on that one. Okay. And, and like when you say that, do you... Is that a good bitter or is that like a huh? No, for me that that's a good bitter on okay, that one. Okay. Okay. Like definitely enjoyable, like something that I'm not turned off by. Gotcha. You know, not, okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to avoid it. You ready to move on to C? All right. Let's do it. The darkest of the three. It is indeed the darkest of the three. Like I would say by a, a hefty a hefty amount here. Yeah, it was definitely like clearly the darkest. Looking all dark caramel, <laughs> almost burnt caramel. All right, on the nose. This one's more wheat forward. Than that last one was. That last one was just like screaming honey and caramel. This one I'm getting more wheat, maybe maybe a little peanut, yeah, a little almost peanut butter. Mm. See, I get medicinal. I get like candy wheat medicinal. Like that. Those are the three words that come to my mind. Like medicinal in a in a band aidy kind of way. Medicinal in a robitussin-y kind of way. Oh, okay. Definitely like strong enough proof that it's like. Definitely like tickling my nose. Yeah, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the, the proof to me is, is giving a little bit of those kind of like that alcohol, alcohol y, night quill kind of quality. It's definitely what you want, you know, in, in mid afternoon, <laughs> spring mid afternoon. <laughs> no joke. How's it going? Well, spring mid afternoon, good night. Going real good. <laughs> it's good. Real good. <laughs> All right. Going in. Jumping in. Ooh. I'm just <laughs> falling in. Belly flopping in. <laughs> mm. That that's just like a sweet bomb. Yeah, it really is. Like bitter, it's it's underneath everything. It's there, but it never jumps out as like the highlight on that one. That yeah. one's just dominated by more like vanilla and maybe maybe cherry. Which I mean, that's kind of starting to think like medicinal to me. Yeah, like an alcoholic cherry. Well, that, I think in, yeah. medicinal in that medicinal way. Medicinal robitussin. I think that I get that on the nose, and then like. It's not on the palate for me. On the palate for me, it's just sweet, like just really yep. sweet. Second sip, the bitter starts poking through a little bit more, but it's definitely not like anywhere where the last one was. Right. Aftertaste is going like really strong, like like some sort of a cherry cough syrupy yep. kind of a thing. Cough syrup is perfect. Yeah. Yep. And and the more that yeah, what's I, the uh, like spray chloroseptic spray? Chloroseptic spray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of giving me a little bit of that yeah. sensation. Yeah. In, in like not a good way. There's like a little bit of like, yeah. huh? Kind kind of in like huh. a, a, a a naughty, yeah. I hit that chloroseptic a little more than I should have, <laughs> but mom said it was okay. Kind yeah. Of way. Like my throat don't hurt that bad, but can I get some of that? <laughs> but you know, it's not like completely dissimilar from B. 
No, no. They're definitely related. They're, like they're in the same ballpark, and that I feel like that one's kind of the same way in terms of mouthfeel. It doesn't feel very oily either. Okay, but good finish on it. Like I think that I think the proof on that one goes up a little bit. It seems to have a little bit more of a bite, really hitting like the back of my throat, just like that chlorosept. Yeah. So for me, like where the B had that little bit of licorice note in there, I think C has more of the 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 robitussin-y like yeah. medicinal note that you get on that very back end. It's like medicinal when, cherry. Like when you breathe in, you can kind of like you can taste it all yeah. the way through like your sinuses. Right. And I'm not a big fan of that right now. Yeah. Like the it's the sweet doesn't really balance that out well enough that that just kind of like really takes over. Yeah, and I don't get any of the the rye spice no. kind of thing that the last one was having. This one just kind of ends. It's got a pretty decently long finish, but that finish is just kind of like flatlined. Right. And it just kind of like eh. goodbye. Yeah. Just like a really slow ramp. Yep, there's nothing else to say about that one. Man, it's interesting that you say that, that they're all American whiskeys. Like even like just now I just went back, had a little sip of each one. Yeah. And I thought that first one was like way completely different, but it actually fits into this pretty similarly now too. And maybe that's just because I've got some, you know, they're all just kind of, I wasn't going water in between each one. Right. You're just kind of going back. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. All right. Now that you've had a chance to try all three. Yep. You've written some things down. You've, you've made some mental notes too. Yep. I want you to place this in your order of highest to lowest. We're going to start at the bottom and we'll work our way up. And I will reveal to you each of these whiskeys after you give me that order. And we'll talk about that order. Okay? Okay. All right. So I'm going to go grab the whiskeys. I'm going to put them in a paper bag so you can't see. Sound good? Sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. You feeling good? Sure. <laughs> no expectations. <laughs> well, no. I, I think, like, let's let's point it out. That's part of this, too. It's yeah. like, because you don't know what these are, these could all be $70 whiskeys. These could be $10 whiskeys. These could be... Nine thousand dollar whiskeys. You have no idea. Okay, now you can answer my questions, though. I can. Yeah. Okay. You got. You already got your order written down. I do. Do this. Give us your order. Okay. And then I'll answer any questions, and then I'll reveal what we got. Okay. Okay. My my bottom glass. Uh huh. What I enjoyed the least. Right. I guess you could say that. I mean, I didn't really have a problem with any of these. Like I would have been fine with a pour of any of these, uh, any night. Sure. You know, wouldn't wouldn't have been upset with anything. Uh, I went order lowest was C. Okay. Uh, second place was A. Okay. Number one, I had B. So in terms of this lineup, you have the most expensive whiskey as your lowest whiskey. Okay. The cheapest whiskey as your middle of the road whiskey. Okay. And you have the middle of the road whiskey as your higher whiskey. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Give yeah. me a, give me a, a range. Uh, these whiskeys go from thirteen dollars up to seventy. Thirteen to seventy. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen dollars to, <laughs> to seventy. Yep. Interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> how, how did you go about selecting said whiskeys? Okay. So each of these whiskeys are four years old. Okay. Each of these whiskeys are one hundred proof. Okay. Each of these whiskeys are bottled in bond. Interesting. They are all part of the eighteen ninety seven bottled in bond act. Okay. Yep. Hmm. There's definitely like some strange like nostalgic thoughts that they kind of bring up. Okay. But at the same time, like I wasn't able to place, like I kept, I kept looking for it. I kept looking for a signature on something. Right. Never could get anything that I was like, yep, that reminds me of X. Sure. Never could get anything. Yeah. Like that. So I was looking at the shelf and I'm like, man, I want to throw, I want to throw some craziness at him. Right. I was like, you know what? No, let's go with things that are pretty readily available. Right. The the seventy dollar one, you might have some trouble finding it. Right, um, that's at a kind of like a, a normal price that I've seen. I mean, MSRP P should probably be somewhere in like the the forty five dollar range, give sure. or take. But all three of these are readily available. You can find them, and they're all three the bottle and bond. They're all the same proof. And and I wanted to not throw like just huge curveballs at you to be like, holy crap, what's going on here? But on the other side, I think that might actually make it a little harder because they're all in that same, you know, general kind of thought process. Sure. And like, I mean, when when we do it for you next time, right. like I've I've already thought like the same thing. Like I would rather keep it in a confined kind of sure. palette. Right. I w- I'm not gonna go like you know here's here's Detling and here's Lafroy Cask Strength, uh, Speckled Tail. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, here's oh. here's Lafroy Lafroy cast rank like that 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 that'd be nuts. 
Like, but you're, and there's nothing to learn from that. And that's that's so exactly totally it. That's different. exactly it. So, and and not that we talked about this before, but I thought of that exact same thing yeah. of like, what can we learn from this? Like, sure, we're gonna learn that you know. Nick likes scotch yeah. more than he likes rye yeah. or whatever, well, well, and, or, which is or, probably not true. On but. March, whatever, <laughs> right. I was in a scotch mood that day. Correct. You like, know? I'm not going to learn anything from that. Now, I, I think that, well, I say I'm not going to learn anything from that. I think that there are some things that you can learn from that. I think that, you know, you can start to like, on that day, like you said, like, man, I was just in a scotch mood, and here we go. I like the scotch. Yeah. But I think something like this, you're going to learn far more nuance of, Okay, they're all in that same Subtleties. ballpark, right? Yeah. It would be like us doing like a beer tasting, and here are four pilsners. Okay, cool. Go. Yeah, you know, and this is kind of what happens at like beer festivals, and like when you're doing uh, a bunch of beer tastings, right? It's a couple of people. They're all tasting one style, and what comes out on top from the entries in this particular style. And to be fair, like I, I know that this happens at the uh, San Francisco World Spirits, like those those kind of big whiskey festivals. Right. It happens here too, where you know this is a a rye. Okay, so this is a uh, a straight rye, you know, hundred percent straight rye, and then I'm going to pair it with three other hundred percent straight ryes, which is the best out of these four bottles. Right. Um, and then the the kind of the big grand prize winner winner is. All right, here is a winner from each category, and what wins out of that? Right. So I think that's cool. Yeah. And I think you can learn a lot uh, about yourself and learn a lot about whiskey through that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, you ready for the reveal? Yep. All right. All right, what was number three? Glass C. Glass C was the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond Seven Year Bourbon. Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. Yeah, so I, I want to give you a little bit of mash bill uh, on this, uh, on each of them, honestly, because it's interesting to now like hear the mash bill and see what uh, what kind of this pairs with some of our tasting notes. Right. Okay. So this is seven years old. Like I said, uh, it is the oldest whiskey we have on the table. Okay. The mash bill is seventy eight percent corn, twelve percent malted barley, ten percent rye. Ten percent rye. Ten percent rye. Interesting. Yeah. And and I don't know. I mean, in terms of that, like nothing about that particular mash bill stands out to me. Um, but I think the age is what stands out to me here. Right. Is it's it's seven years old, and that's kind of like what sets this apart from most bottle and bond. I mean, bottle and bond has to be at least four. Right. So most distilleries will like they'll pull it at that four range. Uh, but this is a seven year bottle and bond. So I'm I'm super surprised because I think like we often attribute age to like being a better thing. And at least in this, that's not the case. Well, and, and I don't know if that's a that's a general statement we can make across the board, but I think yeah, it, there's I, something to say there for sure. And I think it's you know it, it maybe it goes back to something like I think you were mentioning a few episodes ago when we were doing the Detling mm-hmm. of where I was saying to me the Detling it felt more mature and it felt more coalesced. Yeah, well rounded. I think is what yeah, you said. Yeah, it was, it was all kind of like co cohabitating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think that might have been the same thing where, like, there wasn't a whole lot of anything that really jumped out. It's like, I've, I've got medicinal cherry written down. You know, the bitter didn't really poke out. The sweet didn't really poke out. Like, this one was kind of more just kind of that kind of well-rounded yeah. version. So, I think, you know, just in this particular setup, just wasn't my, my jam. All right. You ready for your middle pick? Number two, the Number light two. whiskey. The what? The lighter whiskey. The lighter whiskey. Oh. I think I know what whiskey. it is now. The lighter whiskey, Kyle. That's got to be old Mellow Corn. Mellow yes, sir. Corn. Yeah. As soon as I, as soon as I thought of it now, <laughs> it being a hundred proof, yeah. I was like, oh, that's totally what it is. Yeah. So this is good old Mellow Corn. This is from our camping episode. Man, I wish I would have said it now. Or not? Our, was it our camping episode? <laughs> yeah, we oh, had we, it. No, we our went, second. We went camping. It wasn't a camping episode. We just went camping. Well, it, we, yeah, we didn't it was talk about camping, <laughs> right. but we were camping. Yeah. in the episode. Not not too long ago, like uh, released yeah. early January, a months ago. Was yeah. that? Oh, you know what? That was our year. That was one of our year in review episodes. Yeah, yeah. We we had mellow corn. Yep. It's around the beginning of the year. Anyway, so yeah, this is actually by Heaven Hill as well. Interesting. Which I I didn't I I totally forgot that. I'm just reading the bottle. I yep. totally forgot it. But um, this is ninety percent corn, ten percent rye, malted barley mix. Not really sure what the percentage is there, but no kidding. Yeah. I thought mellow corn was yeah corn. And uh, actually, I we we took that out of the episode because we kept saying like, man, this is hundred percent corn. It's yeah. not. No kid. Yeah, it's ninety percent corn, ten percent. Well, there you go. Interesting. Yeah, ten percent other. <laughs> Miscellaneous interest. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, and I remember like so this is still that that first bottle. Yeah. Um, I've actually come back to this quite a lot, and you and I that that night we had, uh, we had a good, some hefty we, pours yeah, out of this bottle. We had bottle. A, good, a good good bit of it. We did, and uh, there's there's what maybe about a third, maybe a third of the bottle left. Yeah. And it's a bottle that like I recommend to everybody. Totally. This, this is the cheapest. Uh, one of the cheapest bottles you can find. Uh, I've seen it as cheap as thirteen bucks, right? And um, I think this one was maybe like I think I bought this one sixteen something like that because it was at a big box liquor store, right? Honestly, man, you can't get much better for for the for, for the, the price, the value for the right. proof for the flavor. Yeah, no, man, I, a thirteen bottle, a thirteen dollar bib. Come on, man, yeah. like, and it's it's legit too. Yeah, and it's it's that classic bottle. Yep. That classic label it looks like the seventies in, <laughs> in a bottle, and it's still good. Yeah, still good. All right, Are you ready for your last cool. one? Cool. Yeah. All right, let me let me think about it on a second. Okay. You know, looking looking at where we're going, it's got to be old granddad. It is the old granddad bottled old and bond grandpappy. Yeah, there's there's about half of this bottle left. This is a donated bottle too. Yep. Man, this is good good stuff. That's pretty funny. I'm pretty sure just looking at that right now, that is also the old tub bottle i think you're right i think it's the same bottle so that means kyle your th- your favorite bottle the old granddad high rye mash bill bonded yeah bottled and bond Pre- pretty i'm i'm pleasantly surprised by all of this yeah um, actually like in all honesty i mean obviously it's easy for me to say that now but i'm pretty confident had you laid those three out to me and said hey put these in order based on memory I would have done it the exact same way. Yeah. I would have had Old Granddad number one, Melicorn number two, Heaven Hill number three. That's interesting too. Like, do you have the mash bill on that one? I do. I do have the mash bill. And and I, I, why I bring up the mash bill too for all of these is it, it gives us some tasting notes of like where we're going. Sure. Uh, we we said kind of, or I said kind of licorice um, You said dark and herbal. Well, so, and, I, and I kept saying like how spicy that like yeah. once, once that rye poked through. Yep. It just kept biting and biting, and I was like, man. Yep. So it is a high rye mash bill. Um, to be high rye, that has to be the second highest grain in the mash bill. And it is 63% corn, 27% rye. That is pretty high. And 10% malted barley. Good on you, granddad. Yeah. And normally this comes in somewhere in that you know mid-$20 range, somewhere somewhere in there. Yep. Um, I've seen it as high as like 35 yep. Uh But yeah, normally that mid mid-$20 range. So what's cool about this again is you have three bonded bourbons. Yep. We've got two distilleries represented. Yep. Uh, we've got a decent age range. Uh, we got two fours and a seven. But even more than that, we've got a huge price range. Yep. And the middle of the road one is is the the winner here. Yeah. That one. That one. And even like sipping it right now, like that one, even still, mm-hmm. even knowing that it's what it is, like the flavors in that one pop more. Yeah. I. You know what I was waiting for you to say peanuts i know but even right now smelling it like i don't i still don't get peanuts on it Ooh, but i, I know what but you can i definitely get, get rye yeah you definitely get rye yeah. i know what you can get peanuts on yeah <laughs> i do too small granddad <laughs> yeah granddad just 114 not, just not the bonded guess, guess what kyle <laughs> what's up today guess what we found <laughs> what did we find <laughs> we find we we done found it we did it <laughs> we found old granddad 114 oh yeah yeah we bought two bottles we though. did they had six we should have bought all six but that's a lot of old granddad <laughs> We're gonna go through it quick, though. Let's be honest. We probably should have bought all six. <laughs> we should have. So, are you are you surprised by this? What are your big takeaways? It's interesting, honestly. Like looking back at like the the notes that I was taking, the things that poked out, and to actually see them reflected in the drinks. Kept talking about that the rye bite on on gr- old granddad, yep. and to find out that yeah, it's a high rye mash bill, like a pretty damn high rash bill, rash bill, <laughs> pretty damn high rye mash bill. Yeah. And now, it, with that in my head tasting it it's like oh yeah man how did that not just jump right out right right away but i think it did like because it I th- did it just took a minute to realize oh no that's rye uh, yeah yeah you know it was trying it was it was something else and then it was like spicy and oh yeah then it was the recollection that's rye that's right that's definitely like the rye poking through it, and and honestly like i'm not like if i m- my memory serves me correctly like the the heaven hill when we did it on on the episode probably a year ago now actually it was the summer of 2020 i remember kind of even then not being overly enthused by it i mean it was good like it was it was a bottle it was really like it, it had a lot of hype behind it yes and then was that first one was the one that you found uh-huh so and it was it was relatively new too yeah it, it was or at least it had well a, i think a, it was like a revival kind right of that's a, what i was saying a thing yeah no like i mean that that was super fun and like like i said i, I was honestly 
trying to like think of like what's something that pokes out that reminds me of something that we've had and like I couldn't come up with anything right off the bat. Right. So to have the list come out to see what they are now, honestly, like I would still probably put them even knowing that. I would that's that's probably the order that I would put them in. Yeah. Me too. That's cool. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to see what uh what kind of the paces you put me through. I already know what they are. Ooh. Like I've been, you I've been share. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, we'll do it later. Let down. Oh, okay, okay. You gotta tell me later or like yeah, like after you after you tried them, oh. <laughs> I'll tell you I'll tell you what they are. Okay, because I've already done it myself. Oh, ooh, and it's a it's a fascinating journey. Ooh, I like journeys. Yeah, I like adventures. Yeah. Like Bilbo and <laughs> <laughs> going on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I like adventures. No, it's 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 good. It's good stuff. Speaking of adventures, Kyle. Yep. You know what we did this last Saturday? Uh, I should know if it's something that we did. We did this together. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we went to uh, we went to a Celtic fest. We did go to a Celtic fest. That was uh with our friends at uh, Crooked Can Brewing. Crooked Can up yep. in Old Winter Garden, Florida. Yeah, we uh, we made that hike. Speaking of adventures, it was <laughs> a bit of a hike. hike. Yeah, it was a bit of a hike. Yeah, we made the hike uh, even after I parked. <laughs> still had a bit of a hike over to the brewery it was a lot of fun hanging out at, at cricket can um we we planned this out a couple weeks ago which is unlike us <laughs> yeah i know i saw i saw a post uh, a friend of mine made and sent it over to you and it's like hey man we should totally try to make it over there to do that yeah we did we got there nice vibe the little area over there at that brewery is super cool it's like in like a little i would call it like a co-op building yeah where they've got the brewery at one end and then all up and down it, there's all kinds of restaurants and stuff and, and food choices and things. That you yeah, can, it's, it's like in a like an old red brick like warehouse kind of building. Super cool vibe. They were doing Celtic stuff. They had uh, some bagpipes. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of green all over the place. <laughs> hey, real quick, speaking of the bagpipes, you want to hear a little bit? Uh, always. Yeah. All right, here we go. What'd you think? Fantastic. It was. You know who? That's that's Rosie O'Grady's pipe band. There you go. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I I know a guy yeah. who's in uh, Rosie O'Grady's pipe band. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll post a video. Oh. Um, okay. Go, go check out the the Instagrams, the Twitters, the TikToks. There's some video. Yeah, it was a good time. Had yeah. some uh, corned beef and cabbage. I had a pizza. <laughs> <It was> fan- <laughs> <laughs> very, very Celtic. Opinion. Yeah, very. You know that that old Celtic dish, yeah. the pizza, yeah. pepperoni. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> put like some green peppers on it or something. I had pickles. You did have some pickles, not on the pizza, not just on, on the p- side. I've had pickles on a pizza before. I have too. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I could. Well, it was actually like a, I had like a hamburger pizza. That's what it was. Well, it was a a Reuben pizza. Ooh, it was. It was all right. I, I wouldn't get it again. <laughs> <laughs> While we were there, we did a little bit of a tasting, some of their special beers. We didn't do a tasting. All I had was the Irish Red. It was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. I had a a, a pint yeah. of it and then went back and got a full-out Stein. Like a liter. Yeah, full-on liter of it. Yeah, you did. It was delicious. It was really good. Yeah, I, I had a pint of that, too. You had several pints. I did. I did have. I had one or two. <laughs> I enjoyed them. They were all good. Yeah. Speaking of which, we have a little bit of footage of us talking about those. You want to hear that? Yeah. Let's. Um, we did a little bit of recording before things got too ruckus. Oh, it got crazy quick. Yeah. And, a uh, band started playing, and we're like, not good audio. Completely drowned us out. Yeah. I mean, to be to be fair, the uh, the audio that you're about to hear, uh, you know, there's some background noise. There's some music in the background too. But like, once that band kicked up, we were done. Yeah. We, we, kinda <laughs> we looked shut at each other real quick. Yeah. We looked at each other, and we we looked at Carol, and she laughed at us, and we were like, and yep, we're done. Not gonna work. <laughs> 
wrap it up. Which is fine, because like that, that wasn't our point to do anyway. We're just like, hey, I brought the recording equipment. You want to throw something together real quick? And uh, we'll give it a shot. We did. We tried. Ish. So let's listen to that. Okay. Kyle. Yes, sir. We are here at Crooked Can. Finally. Finally. Like yeah. we've never, we haven't been out here. Been meaning to get out here. Yeah. And here we are. We finally made it. Finally. It's been on the to-do list. It has for and quite we, some time. And we've made it. You know, last year we did the summer brewery tour. Yep. And we thought about coming out here to Crooked Can because we both like Crooked Can. Yep, indeed. Uh, this is in Winter Garden, Florida. Winter Garden. Winter? Winter Garden. I say Winter Garden. Winter? Winter. Yeah. There's no t- yeah. winter and winter. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we are here at their annual, I think it's the seventh annual Celtic Festival. Wow, that's a lot of se- like seventh. I think so. I read that somewhere. Yeah. I, that might be incorrect. No. But, you know. Sounds good. So, I mean, if it is incorrect, I like the sound of it. Yeah. Lucky. Lucky number seven. Wow. <laughs> There's four leaf clovers all over the place. Yeah. That lady has one right there. Yeah, look at her. Yeah. <laughs> so here at Crooked Can, they have brewed a couple of special beers for this Celtic festival. No kidding. Yeah. They have um, a, an English nut brown ale. I don't know if these are what they do every year in terms of this, like, this time. Right. Um, but I know they have especially an English nut brown ale. Mm-hmm. They have an Irish red. Yep. They have another stout, which I think might be their stout all the time. I don't know that for sure. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so And then all of their other delicious beers oh, available. Yeah. We, we've had their beers before. Yeah. Like their uh, Cloud Chaser. It's like a Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen. That is delicious. Yeah. What's the other one? The Mix. Um, I've had the, the Mix Swagger. Mix Swagger, yeah. Um, that, that, that's a favorite. It's mm-hmm. an Imperial. Oh, no, yeah. not an Imperial. Or is it just a double IPA? I think Might it's just a be double. double. I think it's a double. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it, it's a kick in the teeth. It can be, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's high up there in the ABV world. The High Stepper. They also have high that. High Stepper? High Stepper. They yep. have that one as well. They also have a couple. I mean, they have they have really good stuff here. Yeah. I feel leprechaun right now. You look leprechaun yeah. and you're green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went all out. So what, what are you currently drinking? A full-on stein of the Irish Red. That is Celtic indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm in the mood, you know? <laughs> Clearly. I'm, I'm feeling the aesthetic. Yeah, you and your, your German-Irish red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, so you've got a stein of the Irish red? I do. What's up with the steins? Um, I, they were just offered, and <laughs> okay. so I was like, I'm a sucker. Yeah, give me one of those. They look cool. They make they a good picture. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. and they also build Do it for the gram. Right? Yeah, totally. My, my left arm is going to be ripped after this. Well, you just got to switch hands. Nah. Build all that... One arm strength. <laughs> Correct. I was we'll going to make some we'll jokes. Put that but right there. There are little ears around. <laughs> not that she's listening. Uh, so you're drinking the red. I'm drinking the the their regular lager, a, a not special beer. The, um, that the workaholic. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, the Florida Sunshine. Oh, okay. Florida Sunshine. I believe it's called. I have already had the others. Yep. Um, right when we got here. Now we're recording. Maybe we've been here what, an hour or two, something like that. Yeah, probably long? like right at, I don't know, what time is it? Uh, it's, almost, it's almost one, so. so yeah, a yeah, couple hours. About, we've we've couple had some hours. food, we've had some drinks. Yeah, so I've, I've had the Irish Red, and I've had the, the Stout. Carol had the Hazy IPA, and she also had the English Nut Brown Ale. Nut Brown. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've sampled a couple different things, but I, I stuck with the lager, wanted to end on just something light and kind of The basic. Yeah, light and fresh. Well, not basic. Not basic, but the, the, the cornerstone. Perhaps. Yeah. Yes, I like that. The cornerstone. That's yeah. good. So let's let's talk about our beers. Okay. I've got the Irish Red. This is very easy drinking. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I didn't check what the ABV was on it, but it doesn't taste very high. Yeah. I would say it's probably like right around a five. Yeah. I think it was four seven. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Um. But really good flavor. Yeah. Not too strong of a bitter. Tasty AF. <laughs> uh. Really malt forward. Not really malt forward, but malt forward. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Great sweet. I would, I would say, like, you know, like a mid-range sweet. The whole thing, it, it's really well balanced, you know, as an Irish red. Irish. 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 Irish red. Right. Just delicious. The music's cranking up, Kyle. They're, they're mm. getting ready. Yep. I have, like I said, I have their, their standard lager. Yep. Florida Sunshine. And, man, it is delicious. Yeah. It's, it's cold. It's wet. Tastes like beer. And Perfect. that's what I want. That's, that's what I you mean, need. That's, that's what you want out of a lager. That's what you want at a festival. Absolutely. You don't you know? want, you know, I'm, I'm good with complex beers. I'm good with beers that are, like, making you think. But at a festival, you want something like this. Yeah. Give me something easy drinking that's going to wet my whistle. Correct. Um, I would say it's probably somewhere in that five range, too. Yep. Uh, it's got slight roasty, toasty notes in there. A little, little, bit little bit of malts yep. going on. It's, it's delicious. Good on it. So some fun facts about Crooked Can. Yes, sir. A um, couple weeks ago, so the, uh, the best Florida beer championships. You know, it's like a big Florida beer 
festival, if you will. Sure. We were invited, but unfortunately we had some other things that we had to do. Yep. So we couldn't make it out there maybe next year. But this year, Kyle, yep. Crooked Can took home five medals. Wow. Yeah, that's a big deal. So five medals. They took home a gold for their uh, American Amber. Delicious. The common ground. They took gold for their Doppelbach, or in the Doppelbach uh, Baltic category. Porter category, yeah, yeah, for their Bach Humbug. Mm-hmm. Great name. Oh, yeah. Uh, they all, they took gold in the Barrel Age Dark Strong Ale for their Barrel Age Winter's Nap. Okay. They took silver for their Workaholic Pale Ale, and they took silver for the Winter's Nap Doppelbach Baltic Porter category as well. A lot of a lot of dark beer categories there. That yeah. They're clinching. Yeah. But not only that, Kyle. Not only did they win the first and second place for the Doppelbach Baltic Porter category, uh-huh. they uh, that's, that's fun to say. Say it with me. Hyper focused. Yeah. <laughs> Double Doppel 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 Not only did they do that, but they also won the best large brewery in Florida for 2022. Wow. I know. I mean, that's that's impressive. You can hang your head on that. On the brewery? Uh, on that, whatever that is. On the, that, that category. That, you see that, uh, that, yeah. Yeah, that trophy? You can hang your hat on that trophy. Yeah. You can probably hang your hat on the brewery, too. There's, there's probably a couple of Dreppin' Stone stickers around this brewery. Looks like uh, some uh, musical entertainment's about to get queued up here. Yeah, and that does not make a good podcast episode with yeah. some dude yelling in the background. <laughs> I mean, it's already you know it's already kind of loud here, as everybody can tell. I'm, I'm sure he's a fantastic performer. Oh yeah, he's gonna be great. You want to go watch him? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we'll head over that way. Okay, I'll follow. <laughs> <laughs> you lead. Okay. I agree with everything I said. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. C- couldn't say it any better now. <laughs> Nailed perfect, it. Nailed it. Perfect the way we said it then. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> well, man, you got anything else? Nope. But this was cool. Yeah, this was fun. I can't wait to do this again. I can't wait to be on the like the receiving end. I can't wait either. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's a fun little exercise, and it, it just gives you the the opportunity to be completely one hundred percent honest. Yeah. Know? Let me let me ask you that real quick too. If you would have put the Heaven Hill at the the top, would you have been like, "Dang, I got this wrong"? No, I don't think so because it's still just like the concept of like, what did it say to you at the time? Mm-hmm. So if at the time that's what hit best in this lineup. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be totally surprised by that either. Right. I mean, these these are these are three bonded bourbons. You know, I mean, it's like it's not like any of these are bad. Right. So it's not like I would have been like, ah, oh, dang it, Heaven Hill, Bottle and Bond. That really, you know, the the, the expensive. Not one the one it. I wanted. Yeah. No, I, I, okay. I don't think so. Because you just have to you just have to be honest and like to have no clue. I was trying. I was trying to think like, what does this remind me of? And nothing was really coming to my head. Um, it's not surprising in think of it in those terms because they're not bottles that I own. Right. You know, so I don't know e- any of these that well that I would have been able to like pick out nuance. So that, that was honestly, that, that was another reason why I chose these three. Cause like, I know you, you've never owned these three right. and like you wouldn't have a chance to sit with them and, and really parse through them. Right. So, you know, in, in that, in those terms, like, you know, it's not, it's not surprising at all. And I don't think I would have been upset had I had Melicorn at the top. Right. You know, like, Melicorn is fucking great. It really so. is. Well, if you had a chance to have any of these three bonded bourbons, the old granddad, the Melicorn, or the Heaven Hill seven-year ball and bond, let us know what you think about them. Have you done a blind like this? And if you haven't, you need to. Yeah, give it a shot. That's 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 good stuff. Yeah. Go get three bottles of something. For sure. Even You know what? Even have a, a loved one go wherever your bourbons are kept. Yeah, all 80 of them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you, you just asked about the open ones. <laughs> Whoa. Right. Uh, have a loved one go into wherever your bourbon's kept. And have them pour you, you know, small pours of three different ones. And then do something very similar. Just see what you got. Because, sure, you're going to remember probably some of what you had. But that that's the interesting thing of like, wow, you know what? No, this one is higher than this one. And this one's better than this one. Right. And and that's that gets you closer to a true blind like what we've done here. Yeah, totally. Hopefully you'll surprise yourself. Exactly. Hopefully you'll surprise your loved one. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Heads up. <laughs> or maybe they'll surprise you. Oh. Even yeah. better. Even better. And if you've had a chance to have any of Crooked Cans beers or go to the Celtic Festival, we want you to let us know what you think about that, too. Yeah. Uh, I know several people that went, had yep. a good time with it. Yeah, It was, what, a, it what, was what, a three-day festival. Yeah. They yeah. had a lot of events and uh, performances and stuff like that. Like it, it was a cool deal. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, Crooked Can beer? Yeah. And you know what? Call Crooked Can and tell them, hey, we heard uh, we heard that Celtic Festival on Trip and Stuff. Yeah. We saw that tiny little blonde girl sticking <laughs> stickers all stickers over the place. Stickers everywhere. There's about 14 stickers all Dang. over Crooked Can. <laughs> 
Well, you can get in touch with us through email. That's dreppinstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. It's always one word, Dreppin' Stone, D-R-E-P and Stone. Come find us and like us and share some posts and make some comments and... Yeah, just you know, partake in the whole social media experience thing. Speaking of that, if you want a sticker, we got some. Yes, we do. And all you got to do is just reach out, let us know how to get in touch with you, and uh, we'll, we'll get you a couple stickers. Yeah, absolutely. We should make stickers of like all the different logos. Like I was listening to that thing of the, the link. Oh, the link I logo? Gotta, I got to get on there and, and figure out what I'm going to do for that. Yeah. But like that'd be funny as hell to have like the Christmas one, the Halloween one. Uh, that would be. You know, it would be funny. That'd be good. If you'd like to support the podcast, honestly, the best way to do that is tell someone about Drop and Stone. Yep. Word of mouth. Yeah. You got a friend who likes bourbon? Let them know. You got a friend who likes great conversations? Let them know. You got a friend who likes good topics? Let them know about Drop and Stone. Yeah. That's all you got to do. It's pretty easy. Yep. You can also financially support the podcast through our Buy Me a Coffee page. It's buymeacoffee.com slash Drop and Stone. And you can rate Drop and Stone, whatever it is you find great podcasts like this one. Yeah. Thumbs up, stars. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow and your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Yeah, you are. All in, baby. Y'all, y'all like damn vacuum, vacuum cleaner. cleaner. <laughs> um, speaking of spring. <laughs> oh, Lord. Don't start already. <laughs> did you get some water in between? I did. Okay. It's acai with a hint of goji berry. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> My favorite. WTF. <laughs> Hold on to those papers for me, please. <laughs> 12% of <laughs> Martin Burley. Martin Barty. I did not. I hung out with the Masons. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Masonic Lodge. The, I was. I was hanging out with the Masonic, Masonic. Lodge. Yeah, is, isn't that a cult of some sort? Mm. Can, can we even talk about them? Like we're probably getting probably right. not. Probably not. Yeah. Hungry Howie. We lost that Hungry Howie's money. There it goes. There goes that Shack money. Damn man. it! Damn it! That's not Shack. Shack's Papa John's. That's what I said. We still got a chance there. Okay. <laughs> still got a chance of that Shack money. Shack Shack-a-roni. Shack-a-roni. <laughs>